Hey, we're back, everybody. A new edition of Locked on Lions. Let's bring back one of the old Lions. I'll explain. Coming up. You are Locked on Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back in, everybody. Locked on Lions, Locked on Podcast. Network Matt Derry with you, fresh off a little vacation on a Tuesday edition, June 21st and a Wednesday, June 22nd. Thank you for listening, making us your first listen each and every day here on Locked on Lions. We are back and refreshed for another week. And you, of course, can follow us on Twitter at Derry Speaks, D-E-R-Y Speaks, at Locked on Lions on Twitter. Also, check us out on the Matt Derry Facebook fan page and video each and every day right here on the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Please subscribe, comment, and do as you wish. Coming up on the show today, there's a former Lion in the news, and I'm asking a simple question. Why not a second act here? I'll explain coming up momentarily on the program. Also, an underrated guy from a year ago that I think is under the radar that we're not talking much about that is coming back this season and I think is going to play a big part in what the Lions are doing. We will explain that coming up momentarily as well. Also, Vegas weighs in. Our friends at Bet Online have some odds that I think are odd when we're talking about the Lions and Dan Campbell. We'll get into that on the show uh, as well. Took a little bit of a vacation la- the last four or five days, and I saw in an unnamed location where we were, out of state, my wife and I, many, I'm not just saying a couple, I'd say a good handful of Lions fans, people wearing Lions gear and having conversations with people and said, oh, Lions fan, oh yeah. People are back on the bandwagon. People love Dan Campbell. Lions fans that I talk to are so excited and all they want to talk about is the coach. They're not talking about Jared Goff. And by the way, congratulations to Jared Goff who got engaged over the weekend to the uh, very beautiful Christian Harper, his longtime girlfriend. They're not talking about Jared Goff. They're not talking about... Jamison Williams or Aiden Hutchinson, everybody, when you talk to them, no matter where you are about this football team, people are talking about Dan Campbell. And uh, Vegas and our friends at uh, betonline.net and betonline.ag are weighing in with some odds that I think are sort of unfair uh, on Dan Campbell. So we're going to get to that momentarily. But this morning uh, on NFL Live, the great, the legendary, whatever you want to call him, uh, the jerk, if you want to call him that. And Dominican Sue was on ESPN this morning. And Dominican Sue was 35 years old and looking for a job. He wants to play another year, maybe even two. Last year, he had a very productive season for Tampa Bay, his third. Six and a half sacks, 12 tackles for a loss. And Sue is looking for a new home. He tweeted today that the Raiders would be fun. And according to reports, He has had conversations with Las Vegas about joining the team. He's still a free agent. And here we sit on June 21st, and no one yet has signed the uh, very controversial Indomitian Sioux. Also, uh, while he has talked uh, with the Raiders, he has had conversations, according to reports, multiple conversations with the Minnesota Vikings. That would mean that the Lions would have to see Sioux twice a year if he were to sign in Minnesota. Let me throw something out there. And I don't know if it's been discussed. I'm behind. I've been off a couple days. Uh, I'm recording this at night. Whatever you want it to say. All right. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing my uh, Biggie Small shirt today. Um, and and Sue and the Lions should be talking. Now, I know what you're going to say. He left. Screw him. Uh, in 2014, he went for the money. He left for the Dolphins. He signed, what, like a six-year, 120-some-odd million-dollar deal. He was the highest-paid defensive player in the game for for a little bit of time. And he did leave the Lions already once. Now, also, if you bring in somebody like Damo to that locker room, you are going to find a a very selfish guy at times, uh, very high on himself. Um, But I've always been a Sioux fan. All right, I know. I I was there in the studio working 
that that infamous day with Valeni and Foster. What was it, 2012, 2013? Maybe even 2014. Might have been his last year. No, I was already gone by then. Uh, 2012, maybe, when he stomped on Aaron Rodgers, got the suspension, um, and then, uh, you know, wouldn't go on the show. He was a scheduled guest each week with Mike and Terry. Uh, then he came back on the show after the suspension, refused to answer their questions about it. I'll just said, I'm focused on New Orleans about 50 times. Uh, Lions PR man, Matt Barnhart, and I on the phone together trying to put Sue on. It was a normal 220 time. Matt calls at 157. It says, and Dominican wants to come on right now at 202. It was a mess. And then he ended up hanging up on Mike and Terry because they just kept asking him, why, why won't you talk about this? And <coughs> it was, I mean, famous. You know, there's just a lot of baggage that comes with Dominican and Sue. And I'm not so sure that the Ford family, even Brad Holmes to an extent, uh, and Brad Holmes knows Dominican and Sue because Dominican played some years for the Rams. But from a football standpoint, let's think about this for a second. Brad Holmes loves collecting defensive linemen. That's number one. Number two, John Penasini retired. Was it last week? He's done. The Lions need to replace the defensive lineman, the defensive tackle. They're going to be playing more 4-3 this year. I don't think Indomitian Sue is a 3-4 nose tackle anymore. I think he needs to be playing alongside Michael Brockers, whom he has played with in the past. Why not lob a phone call and see what he wants in terms of money? You know he's gonna he's not gonna take a cheap deal. And Dominican Sue laughed off the Lions low ball offer from Tom Luan and company many years ago. He wanted to stay. Remember he teared up. He was upset after the Cowboys playoff loss. Upset that they lost and knew it was probably going to be over because the Lions weren't throwing the bag at him like the Dolphins did. He loved playing with Jim for Jim Caldwell. And the Lions' defense, for all you Sioux haters, have, has never been the same since he left. That's a fact. Is he the same player at age 35? No. But could he help this team on the field? Yes. Do I think the Lions are going to call him? No, I don't. But why not? He can help. He's still disruptive. If you really look at his numbers, he's got an argument for the Hall of Fame. The guy was a a three-time All-Pro here in the five years he was here. He was dominant, man. Dominican Sue was a game changer. He's not the same player now, but if you like rotational defensive linemen, you want somebody that's disruptive, why wouldn't you call and just see? Again, I don't think the Lions are going to do it. I don't think they want any kind of distractions. I think Sue in the locker room. Again, I don't think any of the guys are still remaining from the teams that he was on here because he left here in 2014. Uh, I'll have to think about that, but I think that, that the roster is pretty much all cleaned out. Even, even you know, Don mulebach has gone. So I don't think the Lions are going to do it, but I don't see why you can't lob a phone call and see if he'd be interested. You need veterans on this team. This is a very young football team. It's an up-and-coming team, but... Just like the Pistons, okay, down the, up the street, um, you know, up Woodward, I guess you could say, and make a left. Um, the Pistons know that they need to keep Jeremy Grant, probably, because you can't have all 21, 22, 23-year-olds. You need some vets. The Lions, yes, they have a vet in Michael Brockers. They've got a veteran in Taylor Decker. They've got some, Jared Goff's been around. But why not kick the top? I'm a Sioux fan. I just think he's good. I think he can play. What, you want him to go to Minnesota and have to face him twice a year? That's just me. Bring back Sue. Am I nuts? Maybe I am. All right, coming up next, uh, a young player to watch that no one's talking about that I think needs to get some shine. We're going to do that uh, coming up next. First, what about our friends at BlueNile.com? Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping with our friends at Blue Nile. Dot com. They got simple online tools that let you choose a diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring. Each ring is one of a kind. Fellas, you don't know what to do. Let's be honest. Engagement rings, jewelry, probably not your bag. But you know who or where you can go and get a good deal? BlueNile.com. If you're looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7. Available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift 
at every budget. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Lions listeners, you're going to get 50 bucks off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement. Use the code LOCKEDON, all right? That's code LOCKEDON, plus every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. It's perfect. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace by going to BlueNile.com today. That's the letter, a color blue, B-L-U-E, Nile.com today. All right, it's a Tuesday edition of Locked On Lions. Hope everybody is good and uh, hanging in there. A little off-season shows. We don't have training camp for a little while. We're going to get to our Pro Bowl list that we do every summer. That's going to be fun. We're going to talk to the folks from uh, all of, across the NFC North and get some previews of what's going on uh, within the division. Um, um, now Robert Quinn of the Bears wants out. That Chicago team stinks. They're going to be horrible. And now a guy that had 18 and a half sacks last year, He's not, he wants out. I keep talking about the Bears. They're going to finish in last place, folks. The Lions are not going to finish in last place this year. I, I just I sense it. Um, Feel-good story from last year with the 2021 three-win Lions was the play of UDFA cornerback Jerry Jacobs. And toward the end of the season last year, if you recall, Jacobs in, a, in December tore his ACL and his season was over. And last week, uh, Jacobs, uh, on his uh, social media, uh, tweeted out that he's going to be back sooner than you think, and that he's excited, posting on his Instagram, uh, just one more month. So he thinks he's going to be back in time for training camp after tearing his ACL. And unlike Jamison Williams, um, Jacobs' injury was in December. If you remember, Williams uh, tore his ACL uh, in January. So Jacobs is ahead of schedule more so than Jamison Williams. But it got me to thinking, everybody's talking about Jeffrey Okuda coming back, the signing of Mike Hughes. Uh, maybe Will Harris is moving to corner. What about Ify Melifonwu in year two? Where's he going to play? Amanio Ruarie, I think is a really good football player. And I think is, could be a future star at corner. So the Lions have depth, AJ Parker in the slot. Uh, but no one's talking about the return of number 39, Jerry Jacobs, who I thought last year really played well. And it's going to be an important part of the team. And I looked it up today uh, at, at PFF. He posted last year a coverage grade, just a coverage grade, of 66.7, which was fourth best among all NFL rookie cornerbacks last season that played at least 200 snaps. For some odd reason, Brad Holmes found this guy and put him out there, and he played very, very good. Aubrey Pleasant was asked about Jacobs and said, quote, he's in a very good place. Again, this is the defensive backs coach. Again, small victories. I'd like to say he's ahead of the curve right now. Uh, he may start camp in August on the physically unable to, uh, uh, physically unable to perform list, but... If he heals and can come back and play well, he's underrated. You know, teams picked on him and Bobby Price last year. And let's say, I'm not going to say Price wilted, but Price really struggled. All right, you had two UDFAs that had to play a lot with all the injuries that the Lions had at cornerback last year. And Jacobs held his own. He had really good ball skills. He broke up passes. He made plays in the secondary. He was a very good tackler on the outside. And like I said, everybody's talking about the Will Harris. Will Harris might be moving a corner and, and Okuda's coming back and Oruarie. And I think the signing of Mike Hughes was a really good one. But people forget, Jerry Jacobs can play. And for a cheap price like this to get him as a UDFA, and he's a young guy, probably still needs to get you know back in, in, in shape and everything else and be a part of training camp. But he's a player to watch. And posting on his Instagram one more month is a great sign for this team. This is a passing league. You're going to be playing against good quarterbacks each and every week. Everybody's throwing the football. You can never have enough cornerbacks. And I really like what I saw. I really liked what I saw last year from Jerry Jacobs. And because at the end of the year he got hurt, people kind of forgot about him. But he played really, really well. So I think that is great news that the Lions got uh, that he's posting. That he's going to be back in one more month. So he could be 
right there at the start of camp. Be very, very close. Uh, but he believes he'll be there. And the Lions with Jamison Williams are going to take it extra, be extra careful with him. Not so sure it's going to be the same thing with Jerry Jacobs. I think they need to see. I think they know what they have in Williams. I think they hope what they have in Jacobs is not a sophomore jinx and not just some fluky rookie that nobody knew about that he can build off of this. And I'm excited to see that as well because I thought he played pretty darn well last year. All right, our friends at Bet Online have an interesting stat in regards to Dan Campbell. I'm going to do that coming up next. Interesting, odd, I should say, about Dan Campbell. Our friends at BetOnline.net, they are your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Stanley Cup Finals is going on right now. You want to bet on the Avs or Lightning Game 4, I believe it's tomorrow. You can do so at BetOnline. Find all the latest sport, uh, sports developments, league reviews and news, including the Stanley Cup Finals, and, of course, Major League Baseball, all at Bet Online. It's your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, eSports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is your fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including boxing, MMA, and golf. Does anybody play in the PGA Tour anymore? Or are they all in the Saudi League? Find out at BetOnline. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action, bet online where the game starts. All right, folks, uh, I saw something today from our friends at Bet Online. And if I can find it here on my trusty little phone, our friend, uh, buddy Jimmy Shapiro at Bet Online sent this out today. BetOnline.ag and BetOnline.net. The next NFL coach to either get fired or resign. All right, who would you think that would be? Now, I knew this one even without looking at the list, and that would be Matt Rule of Carolina. It's not gone well for him there. They paid him a lot of money, and if the Panthers come out and play really, really poorly, which is possible, I think he could be in trouble. Matt Rule is the correct answer for the first coach with the lowest odds. Uh, three to one odds that he would be the first coach fired or resigned. Number two, Mike McCarthy of the Cowboys at five to one. Also an easy target, right? Dallas always has high expectations. McCarthy has not delivered there yet. He could be in trouble. Number three is Pete Carroll at 6-1 to one odds, the coach of the Seahawks. Again, bad team. They, you know, no more Bobby Wagner, no more Russell Wilson, T, uh, Metcalf, DK wants out. They got a ton of issues in Seattle. This is going to be a difficult season, and they're playing in the best division in football. They got to play Arizona, the Rams, and San Francisco twice a year. Seahawks are in trouble. Plus, they're playing the Lions this year. Look out. All right. So that's number three. Pete Carroll at six to one odds. Number four, a little surprising, but I, I see this. Frank Reich of the Colts, seven to one odds. First coach to be fired or resign. Then Ron Rivera of the Washington football team, er, commanders, at eight to one. Then who's next? You got to figure like Cliff Kingsbury, maybe. Um, you know, bit of a disappointment with Arizona, could be in some trouble. They've got a loaded roster. I don't know. What about Kevin Stefanski in Cleveland? What if the Browns get off to a horrible start? I know the Deshaun Watson situation. I know Stefanski was coach of the year two years ago, but you never know. Um, Robert Sala. What if the Jets, what if Sala's just in over his head, you know? No. Next on the list at number six is Dan Campbell at 10 to 1. Tied with Stefanski. What? Dan Campbell's not going anywhere. He's on a six-year deal. <laughs> He's so beloved here. The ownership loves him. He and Brad Holmes are, like, linked together. That surprised me. They got off to a 3-13-1 and and one start. I get that. It was a horrible team last year playing a brutal schedule. But Dan Campbell, 10-1 to 1 odds? To either get fired or resign, I find that very hard to believe. He's here for the long haul. He loves it here. Fans love him. The players love him. Front office loves him. Ownership loves him. I don't see it. Kingsbury comes in at 12 to 1. Mike Vrabel, 12 to 1. That's another one. Arthur Smith, 14 to 1. The Falcons are going to be horrible. Horrible. Maybe he's in over his head. Sala, 14 to 1. John Harbaugh, 16 to 1. Mike Tomlin, 16 to 1. I don't see that happening. And even Lovey Smith at 50 to 1. What if, like, the Houston Texans are so bad, right? And Lovey Smith just 
he's in over his head. Like, he failed at Illinois. He got fired by the Bears. I know he took the Bears to a Super Bowl once, but I would think that the odds of Lovey Smith either getting fired or resigning would be lower than Dan Campbell. I'm surprised Dan Campbell's at 10 to 1. That's a bet I would I would not take. I would not waste money on. Now, do I think that it's either between Matt Rule and Mike McCarthy? Yes, but I think Dan Campbell deserves to be way down on that list. I truly believe this team is going to improve, and I think even if even if they don't improve, he's not going anywhere. This organization doesn't fire anybody. It, it takes a long time for you to get canned here. This is the Ford family we're talking about. You know, do I need to go, you know, Matt Millen getting a second contract, Wayne Fonts being around forever, Matt Patricia getting a third season, right? P, uh, Dan Campbell, 10 to 1, surprising to me. That's a bet I would not take at all. Uh, the last, who's last on the list? Sean McVay at 100 to 1. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. And Sean McDermott, 100 to 1. Very interesting. Josh McDaniels, 100 to 1. That could be a di- weird situation. We'll see. All right. Tuesday edition of Locked On Lions. Great to be back. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. Appreciate your listening. We are back tomorrow. I uh, hope everybody has a good day. Stay cool out there as well. It's Locked On Lions. Subscribe on YouTube.